Hey, Nelson, alcoholic addict. That's not my real name. That's my pen name that I use for my newsletter. I was driving my daughter somewhere recently, and the song We Found Love came on. You know the song. It's from Rihanna. It's, we found love in a hopeless place. We found love in a hopeless place. All right, I'm not going to sing. Nobody wants that. But I had not heard the song in a long time, and I really liked it when it came out, and I still like it, and I love Rihanna. Um, and so I, I obviously wanted to take the opportunity to really crank that shit in the car. And my, my daughter didn't like that very much. She told me to turn it down, that it was embarrassing to have a dad that is yelling Rihanna songs in the car. And so I, of course, did what all responsible parents should do in that situation, which is uh, I cranked that shit up twice as loud as, uh, as before. <laughs> she reached over, she turned it down. I turned it up again, she turned it down. Then we both laughed and... I turned it, <laughs> I finally turned it down to a reasonable adult level again. One reason I think that I have such uh, deep affection for that song and why it hit me in that moment is that I did find a lot of love in a hopeless place after I went to rehab. Like, I had so many important relationships where things had deteriorated so badly, where, like, we might have still loved each other, but that that sentiment was not flying off of anybody's tongues. We, we said it because we felt like we were supposed to. And so every relationship in my life, big or small, was strained by the end. And most, most people had no idea the level of lying and deceit that was happening around them from me. I was a total fraud. And so, so was the love that we exchanged. It was just something we said to each other. We didn't, you know... I don't know how many people actually meant it um, based on my behavior. Then I got sober and it was, it was time to get real with people. And some relationships took a step backward in the aftermath once they found out the truth. Some relationships took big steps back. And, but for the relationships that really mattered, I was able to stay sober. And I started working a program and I started repairing things. And I don't mean just saying sorry. Most people had heard me say sorry a hundred different ways already, you know. Sorry I was late. Sorry I was an hour late for Christmas. Or uh, sorry I forgot your birthday. Sorry I put that dent in your car. Sorry I thunder chunked puke all over your bathroom. <laughs> so they were done hearing sorry. But making amends really helped. I, I'm not even talking about formally doing steps eight and nine. A big part of the amends process for me was, was working the steps, the first seven, getting spiritually fit and not doing the old behaviors. It's amazing how much things improve, improve when you just stop doing the bad stuff. You know, it's one thing to have a week, a week of clean and sober time under your belt and apologize for getting too drunk at somebody's house 10 days ago. That's one thing. It's another thing to apologize for that, and you haven't done it. You haven't gotten drunk at their house for six months or eight months or a year. And I found a lot of receptive people once I started putting some t sober time under my belt. A huge part of all of this was the, it's the love that people in the program showed me for free, you know? I've shared before uh, a story about how my first sponsor once told me that he loved me, and I was like, uh, wait, what? Like, we don't even know each other's last names, you know? But he loved me, he really did, even though he didn't know my last name. We worked through a lot of stuff together, and those men... Those men from recovery who helped me, who loved me, they, they helped me learn what love, what real love is. You know, I'd been with my wife for 10 years already when I got sober. And the whole foundation of our relationship was, was it was between her and a liar, a lying drug addict and an alcoholic. And there were obviously some issues with a couple where one partner is spiritually fit and amazing and the other partner has the spiritual principles of a of a porta potty at the state fair you know <laughs> that that is the definition of a hopeless place to find love in but we found some we really did i had to learn how you treat people how you listen to people how you make promises and then deliver on them how to show up and i mostly did i learned how to love and be loved and it was it all came from a hopeless place I won't lie, you know, it is a continual work in progress, but man, it is, it's so worth it. 
Um, I have a lot of healthy, very healthy love in my life now, and it's a direct result of working a recovery program. Oh, at least 1% of the credit. I'm going to throw it to Rihanna, too. I Thank you so much, Nana. We love you.